Bunkers, it's time for Renegades of Puck TV. Welcome to the bunker. Welcome to the essence of No Half Steppin'. I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sonia, and before we get started with the No Half Steppin' playoff hockey coverage, I need to direct you to renegadesofpuck.com. That's our home website and a place where you can learn all of the information about the Renegades of Puck. Once you click on that merchandise link, you'll find immediately our classic logo t-shirt, our pride logo t-shirt, all of our special event t-shirts, and all the great gimmicks you've come to know and love from the Renegades of Puck. Throw pillows, bed sets, wall art, it doesn't make a difference to the Renegades of Puck. We've sold out so that you can buy in. We would sure appreciate your support and your assistance on social media. It is critical, an operation that is just over six months old, to get as many recruits as possible into the trenches. And there are so many different ways that you can help out in our efforts. Of course, you can give us a subscription at YouTube, and that's where you can catch the latest episodes of Renegades of Puck TV. But we are also available in so many other formats, especially when it comes to the audio podcast format. You can find us on Amazon. You can find us on Google. You can find us on Spotify, Stitcher, and anywhere that you can find podcasts you'll be able to find the renegades of puck just search out renegades of puck now listen no matter how you decide to consume the essence of no half stepping we sure would appreciate if you would share those on your social media accounts and you can do that on facebook on twitter instagram it doesn't make a difference to the renegades of puck just be out there promoting and be out there helping and assisting in the trenches and with the efforts for the renegades of puck we have a live behind the scenes stream on twitch and we sure do have a lot of fun in the bunker going plug to plug on the broadcasts no it's not pretty but it is real broadcasting and we're having a good time and being interactive and it is just yet another dimension to the Renegades of Puck. You can become a partner of the Renegades of Puck by going to Venmo and searching out Renegades of Puck, or you can just scan the QR code that is currently on your screen. If you become a partner of the Renegades of Puck, every single dollar that you donate goes directly to the Renegades of Puck. No lie, Renegades, I am suffering from a lack of fundage right now, and I need an upgrade in some equipment. So any of you can make any donations at this time. It is of critical importance. We have had a couple of different pieces of equipment that has failed us in the last couple of episodes and recordings alone so we are definitely struggling here in the bunker right now built by renegades for renegades every dollar you send to us goes immediately to assisting and helping the renegades of puck make improvements so again you can do that by going to venmo now i know you're here for the no half step in hockey coverage so it is absolutely time for me to deliver the goods it's operation number 653 for the renegades of puck that is right show number 653 let's go back and talk about the first round of the nhl playoffs then we're going to talk milwaukee admirals the ahl playoffs and we're going to have a good time doing it with all of my good friends the renegades of puck they're going to join me in the trenches throughout this episode. Let's give a quick recap to the amazing weekend that is in the NHL of the first round as we had five series of the eight come down to a Game 7. On Saturday, we were treated to an afternoon where Game 7s got underway, where Carolina defeated Boston 3-2, to two, winning the series three games to two. It was Domi with two goals and assists for three points, and Ranta 27 out of 29 to pick up the victory, putting the Carolina Hurricanes on into the second round. Then we had the next puck drop in Toronto, and we saw the Tampa Bay Lightning come back and defeat the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now, they also came back from down 3-2 in the series to win the series. So we see the Tampa Bay Lightning moving on into the next round. We saw Nick Paul with two goals, the game-winning goal at 16-32. And that came in the second period after that. It was just hold on, and Tampa Bay was able to do that. Vasilevsky was impressive down the stretch, especially in the third period. Late night, we had one more game seven. That was the Oilers defeating the LA Kings and moving on into the second round. McDavid with a goal and assist for two points. And Smith comes away with a victory, 29 saves. Now, currently in progress, the Pittsburgh Penguins are in New York taking on the Rangers at Madison's Square Garden. That is a game seven. And later on tonight, Dallas will be in Calgary to finish up the first round with the last of the five game sevens in this first round. Now, I do have some information about the second round, even though we don't know the final results of those two games at this time. The Florida Panthers will take on the Tampa Bay Lightning in a 1-3 matchup. You'll see the Carolina Hurricanes host the winner of the New York Rangers-Pittsburgh Penguins game seven. The Colorado Avalanche 
which will host the St. Louis Blues, and the Edmonton Oilers will host the winner of the Calgary or Dallas winner. Schedule announcements are not expected to come either late this evening or early sometime on Monday. Now, to go back and recap everything that happened in the first round of the NHL playoffs, Mastradamus has stayed behind on rear guard while the Renegades of Puck have gone out on the frontier to help with the Milwaukee Admirals' day-to-day coverage. So Mosh has stayed behind and tracked everything that's happened in the NHL first-round playoffs, even after the Nashville Purs were eliminated by the Colorado Avalanche. Here's Mosh Radamus with his report on everything that you missed in the first round of the NHL playoffs. Thank you very much, Charlie. An incredible first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs here in 2022. Five series go the full seven games. That is the most since 1992. It tells you what kind of teams are in these playoffs and the competitive level, especially out east. I said before the playoffs started, I would not be surprised if all four series went seven games. Well, three out of four out east did go the full length, seven games out there. And I'm just going to give everybody a quick recap, of course, of what happened. Out west, of course, no competition. The National Predators get swept by the Colorado Avalanche. Doesn't matter who was in net. We've gone over that many times before. I'm not going to waste anybody's time reviewing that series again. St. Louis beats Minnesota in six games, a series in which four goalies were used, much like the Colorado and Nashville series. A lot of goaltenders being used in this series, more so because of performance instead of injury, of course. A lot of controversy up in Minnesota with Marc-Andre Fleury getting the start in the first five games. Cam Talbot made no bones about it afterwards, that he was unhappy considering he finished the season 13-0-3. And... Mark andre Fleury got the nod in the first five games. Game six, of course, went St. Louis's way. Cam Talbot, not a happy camper up in Minnesota. Interesting to see how that leads into next season. L.A. and Edmonton, courageous performance by the L.A. Kings. They were completely outmanned in this series. They took the Edmonton Oilers to seven games. Connor McDavid, of course, the star of the show. He was absolutely incredible. And Mike Smith versus Jonathan Quick. We think it's back in 2012, I guess, but these two goaltenders, again, putting on a show, more so Jonathan Quick, keeping his team in it. But here's Mike Smith beating out Jonathan Quick in a playoff series in 2022, not something anybody would have expected to see at at this level. Dallas and Calgary finished up last night. Jake Ottinger, absolutely incredible performance by him. The third most saves in a Stanley Cup playoff series in NHL history. That tells you the type of performance he put together just to keep Dallas in this one. And, of course, loses in Game 7 in overtime on an incredible shot by Johnny Gaudreau on a sharp angle. We talk about it all the time. Goaltenders on that sharp angle shot, they cover as much as they can, but there's a little bit of room on that short side by the head. If you can pick that spot off, it's usually going to go in. And, of course, Johnny Gaudreau put an end to that series. But Jake Ottinger single-handedly nearly took the Dallas Stars on to the second round of the Stanley Cup playoffs to face the Edmonton Oilers. But we get what we want, the Battle of Alberta, Edmonton versus Calgary in the second round. And, of course, in the other series, Colorado versus St. Louis. Big-time matchup there, St. Louis against Colorado. Interesting to see who will be the starting goaltender for St. Louis, of course. And we all expect Darcy Kemper to be okay, by all accounts, after what happened last week. Out east, I mentioned it. Incredible series all up and down. Washington versus Florida was the series that did not go the full seven games. Six games. Florida beats the Washington Capitals four games to two. And Florida was two minutes away from being down three games to one in this series. They pulled the goaltender. They get the game-tying goal in game four. Eventually win in overtime. Win game five and win game six in overtime as well. On top of that, putting out Alexander Ovechkin in the Washington Capitals. So Florida first Playoff series win for them since 1996. Incredible to go that long without a playoff series win. So Nashville fans, it could be much worse. You could be Florida going through that long of a stretch. So moving on, Carolina versus Boston. The home team wins every game in this series. Carolina with the home ice advantage ends up putting out Boston. Got crazy there at the end of the game seven. Looked like Carolina had it in the bag up, up by two. Boston scores a late goal with about 20 seconds left. You don't think there's that much time, but Boston did get a couple more scoring chances before Antti Ranta ends up shutting the door down and Carolina moving on. Toronto versus Tampa Bay. This is a series I mentioned before the playoffs started. 
was going to be an incredible series. It lived up to its billing. Several games were actually blowouts, but the the series, of course, goes the full seven games in Tampa Bay up in Toronto. Toronto, once again, always the bridesmaid, gets beat again on home ice. Nine consecutive times Toronto has had a chance to eliminate a team from the playoffs. They are 0-9 in those games. Toronto, not sure what needs to change. If anything, will change up in Toronto. You would think there's going to be some sort of issue, of course, with the salary cap, who they sign, who they bring back. But Toronto out once again. This isn't a choke job, though, by them. They outplayed Tampa in large portions of this series. But Vasilevsky just outplayed Jack Campbell. Campbell had a great series. I mentioned it beforehand. Former first-round draft pick of the Dallas Stars. He has all the potential in the world. He's finally starting to live up to it since moving to Toronto. But he was just outdueled by Andre Vasilevsky, particularly in Game 7 in that third period when Vasilevsky shut the door down and Tampa Bay, back-to-back Stanley Cup champions, moving on to face their in-state rival Florida Panthers. And in the last series, Rangers-Pittsburgh, unbelievable series. Pittsburgh up three games to one. Up 2 to nothing in Game 5 and lose. Up 2 to nothing in Game 6 and lose. Up by a goal with 6 minutes left in Game 7. Game-tying goal. And eventually, Artemi Panarin, who looked lost in Game 7 the entire time, gets a power play goal in overtime to put the Rangers in to the second round to face the Carolina Hurricanes. Absolutely amazing series. From Game 1 being triple overtime, five different goaltenders being used combined by these two teams. Absolutely incredible. Instant classic if, if you're looking at competitiveness, storylines back and forth. You know, Pittsburgh at one point had the hands down Vesna Trophy winner Igor Shesterkin at a 10 goals against average up in Pittsburgh. And he ends up coming back calm and cool, wins the last three games of the series, and the Rangers are moving on. I do find it a little bit funny that. The Pittsburgh Penguins, both Sidney Crosby and their coaching staff, complaining about the helmet rule late in the game in Game 7 when they really don't understand that helmet rule all that well. Sidney Crosby, for my money, shouldn't have even been playing in this game. He was three days after suffering another concussion, putting his life out there. And again, this is where the league should step in. I know Brian talked about it. They need to step in and protect players from themselves sometimes. Sidney Crosby absolutely should not have been playing. And... Well, he's out now, so maybe he can rest up and get healthy for next season. But New York, Charlie and I, long roots with the New York Rangers. They will be moving on to face the Carolina Hurricanes. I don't know what else to tell you guys. That first round was absolutely incredible. And we still got three more rounds of this to go, guys. So it's been a wild ride already. I cannot wait for Tuesday and the rest of these series to get going. Charlie? Back to you. You can find him on Twitter at GreekGoalie35, and you can watch him right here on Renegades of Puck TV. He's the starting goaltender of the Renegades of Puck, and I sure do appreciate Mosh for staying behind and keeping an eye on the fort and also keeping an eye on everything happening in the NHL playoffs while the rest of the Renegades have gone off to cover the Milwaukee Admirals. Speaking of the Milwaukee Admirals, we need to get to that Game 5 full recap as their series has come to its conclusion. That coverage, that full game breakdown coming up right now it's the rebirth sports full game recap rebirth sports check out their work at rebirthsports.com or you can find them on social media they're on twitter they're on facebook they're on instagram and their work is simply incredible they're not just incredible people they're incredible partners and they make an incredible product they are not just jersey makers they're hockey tailors and they can outfit your operation in the most incredible ways today i sure do hope that you're going to reach out to rebirth sports and see exactly what they can do to make your operation look as good as the renegades of puck you see me wearing the third jersey right here here. You see the first jersey, the road jersey, and you see all of the other jerseys that I have worn from Rebirth Sports over the years. Incredible, incredible partners here to the Renegades of Puck. Now, let's get into that full game recap. Let's go all the way back to May the 15th of the year 2022 and game five between the Milwaukee Admirals and the Manitoba Moose. The winner of this game will move on to the next round of the Calder Cup playoffs. Carl Taylor deployed his lines in the following way. Grimaldi, Glass, and Smith, Huntington, Novak, and Burke, LeBate, 
Parson and, and Schneider, McLean, not and Olivier, and on defense, Delgazo, Tennyson, Donovan, Healy, and then Davies and Blugis. Ingram gets the start in net for the second time in this series. We are only 16 seconds into the first period, and Burden's coming up with a save on Glass at the 38th second mark. Burden comes up with a save on Huntington at close range. 453 at the first period. Ingram comes up with a save on Hainola. It's his first shot on goal for the Manitoba Moose, and the first time Connor Ingram has touched the puck in this game. 553 of the first period. Burden comes up with a save on Glass. 659. Novak hits the iron. 751. Hutchinson's off to the box. Two minutes four. Holding the Moose PK. Holds strong on this one. They have been relentless throughout this series. 1109. Burden comes up with a save on Rocco Grimaldi. And then at 1305, we see Parson in with his first goal of the playoffs. His first goal in North America. It was a rebound backhand jam. And I love when a player goes to the net hard and finds that loose puck and puts it back to the net. The Milwaukee Admirals now have a one to nothing lead over the Manitoba Moose. At 16 17 in the first period, we see Burden come up with a save on the bait plus David. Davies rebound chance and opportunity 1944 Johnson's off the box two minutes for puck over the glass delay of game the Milwaukee Admirals outshoot the Manitoba Moose 13 to 4 in the first period have a one nothing lead at the end of one and a power play heading into the clean sheet to start two that's going to last for a minute and 45 seconds that's where we pick up the action with Tommy Novak picking up his first goal of the playoffs giving Milwaukee a two to nothing lead over the Manitoba Moose it was a wrist shot from the top of the circle and Tommy Novak continues to put up an impressive series against their opponent right here. We see at 335 of the second period, Burks off to the box, two minutes for slashing, and Barron, who has tormented the Milwaukee Admirals in this first round, scores his first fourth goal of the playoffs. It was a wrist shot from out high, cutting the lead to two to one. Now Milwaukee definitely starting to see things tighten up out there as the Moose are starting to control much of the rest of this period. As a matter of fact, the Milwaukee Admirals are only able to generate two shots on goal in 12 plus minutes, and there are large stretches of play taking place in the Admirals defensive zone. Connor Ingram is definitely putting in some good work in this period. 1437 of the second period. Burden comes up with a save on the bait off of the rush at 1503. Healy and Meyer off the box for two minutes and that sets up a four on four situation. Burden comes up with a save on glass after Novak sets him up with a perfect feed. And Tommy Novak deserves some credit for the patience and vision that he displayed on this particular distribution. We hit the end of the second period. The Milwaukee Admirals are still out shooting Manitoba 17 to 14 now so we saw almost a complete flip from the first period to the second period let me just go back and remind you at the end of the first it was 13 to 4 in favor of Milwaukee now it is 17 to 14 in favor of Milwaukee we hit the third period in this game five we're 117 in and Berdin comes up with a save on Novak 234 Healy and Hutchinson wrestle after the whistle but there are no penalties called and that was quite surprising considering how long this scrum went on after the whistle. 319 in the third period. Ingram comes up with a save on Esamont at 615. Ingram comes up with a save on Pagansky's jam attempt at 633. Del is off the box. Two minutes for interference. Now while the PK was under pressure, it was able to survive and Connor Ingram comes up with one hell of a scrambling save. He got the job done. That's what's most important. Milwaukee was definitely under siege after the PK ends for the next minute plus. It was the best pressure by the Moose for for the entire game, but the Admirals are able to survive. 11:27 of the third period, Ingram comes with a save on Pagansky's deflection from the low slot. 14:09, another save on Hainola. 18:11, a save on Hainola plus the wrist shot follow-up opportunity. 19:47, Ingram another save on Esimont's jam, and then that led to a scrum after the whistle as Esimont was determined to get that puck to the net, but Connor Ingram was more determined. And that is your final. The Milwaukee Admirals defeat the Manitoba Moose two to one. The Manitoba Moose going to outshoot Milwaukee. 28 to 21, but Milwaukee goes on to win the game and goes on to win the series 3 to 2. Highly impressive effort by the Milwaukee Admirals. No, they did not generate very much offense after the first period. As a matter of fact, once they were able to get the two goal lead, they only generated seven more shots for the remainder of the game. So almost 40 more minutes of action, right about 39 minutes, seven shots on goal, while Manitoba was able to pile up shots on goal, going from four at the end of the first period to 14 at the end of the second to 28 at the end of the game. Connor Ingram, we will discuss his efforts a lot more detail here in just a second. That was your Rebirth Sports full game recap. You give us 10 minutes, we'll give you the game. Give us an additional 10 minutes, the Renegades of Puck will give you all the information, stats, analysis, and opinion you need to know to get you all caught up and get you set up for the next Milwaukee Admiral Series, which, by the way, will take place against the Chicago Wolves. We'll update that coming up now.
As I just mentioned, the Chicago Wolves finished off the Rockford Ice Hogs in a 3-0 sweep. The scores in that series, 6-2, 4-1, and 4-1. So Chicago outscores Rockford 14-4. And the Chicago Wolves are absolutely a juggernaut in this playoff bracket. Milwaukee Admirals took five games to get past the Manitoba Moose, but they were able to do so. They were outscored 16-12, but they were able to win the series 3-2. Some of the scores rather lopsided caused that situation. 3-2 in Game 1 in favor of Milwaukee, 2-1 to one in Game 2, and then they suffered a loss 5-2 to two in their first game in Winnipeg, and then 7-3 to three in their second game in Winnipeg against the Moose, and then winning Game 5 earlier today, 2-1 to one on the road. Highly impressive stuff by the Milwaukee Admirals. We will now start the next round, Milwaukee versus Chicago, dropping down to the bottom quarter of that bracket. Stockton swept Bakersfield 3-0, outscored them 12-7 in the three games total, and now we'll await the winner of the Ontario and Colorado series. That game three will take place later tonight. So far, Colorado has had absolutely no problem with Ontario outscoring them 15-5 to in their two victories in this series. I anticipate we will be seeing a sweep. And speaking of a sweep, as we head over to the Eastern Conference side of things, we just completed a sweep of Springfield over Wilkes-Barre, and today's game was just absolutely insane. Final, Springfield 7, Wilkes-Barre 6. The previous scores in that series, 6-2 to two and 4-1. to one. So now Springfield moves on to await the winner of the Charlotte and Bridgeport series. Charlotte currently holds a 2-1 one best of five in that series. Utica and Rochester went to overtime and they were able to complete that one and we will move on to game four in that series. Syracuse and Laval are headed on to game five on Tuesday night. That series is tied at two apiece. So that gets you all caught up on everything going on with the AHL playoff bracket. We've already got half of the bracket filled out for the next round and in the next 24 hours or so we will see a lot of these series come to their conclusion style fitness an incredible partner to the renegades of puck a certified personal trainer so confident in her work that she has made over 150 of her workouts available completely for free to you donation based on youtube on demand whenever it is you're ready to get up off the couch and get that first stretch or you're ready to throw iron like a pro Tracy is ready to help guide you through your workouts. I have seen the results myself. I've experienced the results, and I have plenty of other renegades who have as well. Take the time and take a look at everything going on with Strong Style Fitness. That is one incredible renegade right there that is helping out in the trenches. So stick taps, love, and respect to Strong Style Fitness. Now, let's get back and talk about everything that happened in this Game 5 between the Milwaukee Admirals and the Manitoba Moose. And it was the first playoff road win since May the 3rd of 2011 listening to Aaron Sims and the game winning call at the end of the game it was incredible to listen to his call he is a great broadcaster absolutely stick taps love and respect to you my friend great job on that call and a fantastic call especially the line you uttered that happened just just off the air but the first playoff road win since May the 3rd of 2011 and Connor Ingram deserves a lot of the credit for this game five victory he went 27 out of 28 overall in this game 14 out of 14 in the third period and listen after he came back down from Nashville it took him a little bit of time a game to get readjusted yes he gave up seven goals in game four but he didn't get a lot of help from the defense tonight a total team effort in front and Connor Ingram backstopping the team like a pro 14 saves in the third period and he's going to need to be better than that he's going to need to be great against a very heavy very stacked Chicago team coming up in the next round but we've got plenty of time to talk about that for now give him the credit for securing the victory and getting the Milwaukee Admirals out of a round of the playoffs for the first time in 11 years Connor Ingram comes up with a huge performance today the power play and the PK has been such a big story in this series well the power play and the PK today were able to cancel out and break even as the Admirals were able to score one power play goal and they were scored on one time while they were shorthanded the Admirals had only seven shots on goal after taking the lead now listen that is not good enough they should have been able to generate more offense and they should have spent more time not on defense they got themselves worn out they definitely had to be bowed out by their goaltender more than enough times. But they should have been able to generate some more offense, but they went into a tight checking and locked everything down and tried to hold on for that one goal win. That doesn't happen a whole lot in hockey. It was able to go their way tonight, and they were able to secure the victory. So give them the credit. It worked out this time. But I would advise, if you have the opportunity against Chicago, a one-goal lead is not going to hold up if you just sit back and try to go the last 40 minutes of the game protecting a one-goal lead. And you got to give stick taps to Tommy Novak in this first round. Six points, led Milwaukee in scoring. He had the game-winning goal in Game 5. 
five assists previous to that in the series. And again, Tommy Novak out there playing good, hard minutes, showing patience, showing vision, and definitely improving. I was a fan of his when he had an opportunity to play in Nashville for 27 games, I believe it was, uh, this season. And I thought that he showed a lot of intangibles that are going to make him a player that makes it to the NHL level and probably sustains for quite a few years of his career. I like that player. He's a good player, and tonight he had a lot of his skill set on display, and he led the team in the first round in scoring. I can't wait to see what he's going to be able to do against Chicago in the next round. we got to go over to onthefourcheck.com right now. We've got to check into the tape room. Rachel Kay has been breaking down the series from an analytical standpoint, and she's been going back and reviewing everything. She's going to talk to you about everything that happened between the Admirals and the Moose in this round of the Calder Cup playoffs, and we're going to start teasing and getting set up for everything that's going to happen with the next round against the Chicago Wolves. Rachel, it's all yours. It's Rachel checking in. I still don't have a camera together. I don't have a lot together. As you can tell, my voice is a little rough right now. Let's blame the allergies in Tennessee. All right, so the Admirals have advanced to the second round of the Calder Cup playoffs for the first time since 2011. I am ecstatic. First, let's talk about Connor Ingram. He played an incredible game in net, his best since returning from the NHL. He withstood multiple power plays from the Moose, as well as a big six on five for Manitoba's biggest stars. It was truly great to see a big smile on his face after today's game. Tommy Novak sure said it best post-game, there's not a lot of quit in our room. Think about that. There's not a lot of quit in our room. Sounds a lot like no half-step in there, Captain. Anyway, Coach Taylor was right. The Moose weren't going to be able to win three in a row against the sturdy Admirals. Our Admirals played a tight, savvy game. Now, let's talk about the penalty kill. They haven't had a great time with that over this series. They were fine tonight, but if they're going to face off against Chicago in the second round, definitely need to work on that power kill. Get it? Power kill? All right, we know our Wolves are going to be a tough opponent, and simply keeping the puck away from the net is not going to be all we can do there. We're going to need to make sure that the puck has opportunities on net Every single chance that we get. Tonight, Captain, having Rocco Grimaldi back was absolutely incredible. He's led the Admirals with and without a letter all season, and having him back from injury today really, really secured that victory. Grimaldi could have gone to the AHL. He could have moped. He could have complained. He could have just sat there and played some games, not really impacted at all, but that's not what he's done. He has been absolutely huge for the Admirals all season long, and his line was huge tonight. The little five foot six guy led the way for our Admirals. And finally, our guy Yuso had a golden night. He's impacting at the AHA level, and that is key for his future with the Preds organization. I was very impressed to see that first North American goal. He's going to be big for this series going forward. All right, Cap, I'm still really sorry about not having a camera. I'm also really sorry that I kind of sound like the Crypt Keeper with the way my voice sounds. Anyway, back to you, Kay. Thank you so much, Rachel. That's Rachel Kay from OnTheForeCheck.com from the tape room. We sure do appreciate all the efforts that Rachel has put in in the first round and cannot wait to see what she is going to put in in our next round of coverage here on Renegades of Puck TV. Let me tell you about Stripe Digital Solutions. Stripe Digital Solutions is another incredible partner of the Renegades of Puck. The logo on the wall behind me, the crest on the jersey, renegadesofpuck.com, our social media plan, everything that we do here in the bunker with the Renegades of Puck is assisted by Stripe Digital Solutions. You can check them out, stripedigitalsolutions.com or social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Brandy is an incredible artist over there in the digital realm, and she is absolutely the best. You should check, start a conversation today and see what Stripe Digital Solutions can do to help grow your brand and to help make your business get in front of many more people. Stripe Digital Solutions, an incredible company built by incredible people, and they are great to jo work with here in the trenches. That's Stripe Digital Solutions. Let me jump into the box score real quick with a fairly low event game overall. 
a high stakes game, but a relatively low event game. The shots both down in the 20s. You understand what I'm saying. When it comes to the goal scorers in this game, we talked about Tommy Novak scoring that goal. And we also talked a little bit about Yuso Parsinen picking up his first goal in North America. Couldn't come at a bigger and a better time. And congratulations to him on that goal. I know that that had to be incredible. And you heard his preview here on Renegades at Puck TV from Kyle Perkins. So stick taps Kyle Perkins for being way out in front of that story and getting us all caught up so we knew exactly what we were looking for when that player scored that goal. Today, Tommy Novak, I just mentioned, scored a goal, and that was his team-leading sixth point of the series. On the assist side of thing, Cole Schneider picks up an assist. Rocco Grimaldi picks up an assist, and Jeremy Davies picks up another assist in this series. Connor Ingram goes 27 out of 28, but most importantly, 14 out of 14 in the third period. Brian Baston from OnTheForeCheck.com usually runs the Renegade Analytics Desk and is usually here with one big stat, but Brian asked me for a couple of minutes to talk about some issues around the league that are concerning him and he would like to talk about right now. I always have time for a renegade that wants to talk and definitely one that has strong opinions and passions. You can find him on Twitter at Brian Baston. You can check out his charts at OnTheForeCheck.com. He's got the numbers you need to know and the charts you need to see. He is the one and only Brian Baston. I appreciate you giving me the time to speak about something, something that I've spoken about in the past, both on this show and in my writing, and it is how the league handles player safety. Now, we've seen many incidents just this week of, of the NHL, you know, completely disregarding player safety. You know, uh, we saw a completely very dirty uh, launching penalty that did not get penalized by the Department of Player Safety just, just earlier this week. And now we hear news of... Sidney Crosby being forced out of the game in, in game six, um, you know, sus, you know, it, they were suspected that it was con concussion protocol. Now, the team did mention today, this afternoon, that he did clear the team's, uh, uh, the team's athletic and medical trainers on, you know, concussions. They did not see any, they didn't see any symptoms, according to them, and they did clear Sidney Crosby to play, and he also made the choice to play, which they did say that the, the team was going to respect the wishes of Sidney Crosby and the team doctors, if the team doctors would allow him. So, what's the problem? Honestly, for the Pittsburgh for the Pittsburgh Penguins, I imagine that they do have the best interest in heart for Sidney Crosby. He is the backbone of that franchise. He is the face of a franchise. In fact, it's hard for me to say this, but Sidney Crosby is a generational player. He is a once in a generational type of guy. He's already done so much in this league. He's been here the second he stepped into the league, he was dominant and he's got the Stanley Cup championships to back that up. But even if he was cleared, Sydney did not need to do this. He's got nothing left to prove. And there's a narrative. Yes, when you've got a, a strained, a strained, you know, muscle in your arm, or you've got, you know, you've got a lower body injury, but you can think you can skate through it. That is one thing. But there is a little bit, in my opinion, of a problem in not just hockey, but all sports in general, especially men's sports, that you see this push for it is a better thing. It is so great that this player put the team first and played through an injury. You see it all the time. And the problem is, is you see this all the time, and so do kids. And that's where we need to really take a look at what this is. Now, again, maybe Sidney Crosby, Crosby was completely cleared and did not have any concussion symptoms whatsoever. Sure. But he is suited up, and he is currently playing in Game 7 right now. And he he played in. He, he assisted on a very nasty goal by Jake Getzel. But... Again, what is the example that, that we're seeing from him? I'm not going to blame Crosby on this one. The players themselves are going to try to make the move that either is best for them or best for the team. And Crosby is, if nothing else, a team player. But we've got a little bit of a problem with this because kids see this stuff and they say, it's so important for me to be in this game. They need me. I'm going to, people are going to talk about how great it was that I put the team first and I fought through injuries because I'm tough and did this. The problem is, is that this is causing those issues to trickle down because the parents see it, coaches see it, and they go, yeah, that's what we should be doing. And so we will have kids and we'll see people who will be continue playing past the point which maybe they should stop and causing long-term brain damage. Now, long-term brain damage, CTE or uh, chronic traumatic encephalopathy. It's it's what we've seen in, in the NFL. We've seen this in, in hockey, but again, you would think that maybe the players need to be protected from their own decisions sometimes. Maybe the teams need to have that decision taken out of their hands so they can't make the decision that's best for the team rather than the player. But as we've seen, the NHL, and for that matter, in some cases, the NHLPA, 
do not seem to have an interest in keeping their players safe and protecting them, especially once they leave the NHL. Now, just a few years ago, I wrote a piece about um, Gary Bettman and some tweets that had come up in May of 2019 talking about his pretty much blasé attitude towards CTE. So let me read you a little small section. Gary Bettman said at one point, I don't believe there has been anything based on everything I've been told. And if anybody has any information to the contrary, we'd be happy to hear it. Other than some anecdotal ev evidence, there has not been that conclusive link to CTE. Right now, I don't think there is anything we can do. <sighs> Three years ago, CTE, we have seen continuously over and over the traumatic impact on players for CTE, for head injuries, and the league is not doing enough, simply not doing enough to protect its players. Bettman has drawn a line in the sand and made himself entirely clear that the employees that work for him are becoming disabled by the job he is in charge of, and guess what? He does not care. And you know what? A great thing that we just came up this just a couple months ago in March, Boston University, who, who um, found had published groundbreaking research on CTE in football, and we've seen so many changes in the NFL. Not all great things, but they're making progress. But back in March, Boston University researchers said that each additional year of playing ice hockey, not just in the NHL, may increase a person's chance of developing CTE by 23%. Each additional year. And for each year that they were playing it, there was an associated 15% increased chance for process, uh, progressing one stage of CTE, so getting to a more severe thing. Look, I'm not saying that the Penguins lied or the medical staff was pressured. I'm not. In this case, I hope I'm wrong. I hope Crosby's fine. As much as it kills me to say it, I do not. I can hate a player, but I do not wish ill on his health or his family. I've said many times before, Roman Yossi, I'm very concerned about the fact that he's had, at the very least from our count, at least eight to nine uh, concussions throughout his NHL career. And that can be dangerous, not just for, you know, right now as in his hockey career, but pers uh, you know, down the road. We've seen players who forget their family members' faces. We see these things. The NHL and the NHLPA have to do something more. They have to get off their butts and protect their players because these players are not just assets. They are not machines in a factory that can be replaced for a cost. These are human beings. And the NHL needs to get on that and protect their employees from the dangers and the trauma of the game that they play. They, these players accept that, that risk when they play this game, but science is continually, continually showing that this can be, more needs to be done. We have to do more to protect these players. Otherwise, we're going to see more, more, more sad stories like we do of players losing their memories, losing facial recognition, you know, doing things even worse for their bodies. We have to stop this now. And we have to set a better example in these situations. And just because it's Sidney Crosby and it's a game seven in the playoffs, round one of the playoffs, we need to be protecting our players. Thanks a lot, Charlie. Back to you. You can check out his charts at onthefourcheck.com. He's got the numbers you need to know, the charts you need to see, and you can find him on Twitter at Brian Bass. And stick taps, love, and respect. Brian, appreciate you jumping in the trenches and talking about issues that are very important to you and for bringing the passion and bringing the jam here on Renegades of Puck TV, as each and every one of the Renegades of Puck always do. Now, it's time to close this episode out, and this has been incredible. With the Nashville Predators being eliminated from the playoffs in the first round, being swept by the Colorado Avalanche, well, the Renegades of Puck needed a new mission, and Kyle Perkins stepped right up and he said, why don't we jump right on board and jump in the trenches with the Milwaukee Admirals and cover that team full speed ahead as if we would, as if the Nashville Predators were continuing on. And Kyle Perkins, you are absolutely genius to suggest that. This has been a blast. I am loving watching the AHL Calder Cup playoffs, breaking it down as if I would the Nashville Predators and using the same exact format that we use to cover the NHL to now cover the AHL and relying on a select group of renegades of puck to bring analysis, opinion, and stats on each and every episode. This has been wonderful, and it has been great to see the Milwaukee Admirals step up and win their first playoff series in 11 years. We're going to continue on with the Milwaukee Admirals into the next round against the Chicago Wolves. Chicago Wolves are one hell of a hockey team in the AHL, and it is going to be a tough opponent for the Milwaukee Admirals. But we'll be here to break it down. We'll be here to cover it all, and we're going to recap each and every game in full detail thanks to our great partners and our great friends at rebirth sports so for mastradamus for sean c smith who'll be back in the trenches soon 
for Brian Baston, for Rachel K, for K Perk, and for the ultimate one. I am your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sonia. We sure to appreciate each and every one of you jumping in the trenches with the Renegades of Puck and supporting us in any way that you can. Stick taps, love, and respect. <laughs>